unmute. Hi. Hi. I missed it as you so much. I got to pin you, but I don't want to see myself. Yes, you. The pin, the video pinning is key. What does that mean? It just means like, depending how much view, if you don't pin the person, whoever's talking becomes big. So right. That would be when, when I spoke, I would suddenly become big. I don't right. want to see me. I want to see you. I'm really surprised actually that Zoom is not just a little more technically advanced in that way. <laughs> I tend to just blame myself because I keep no, finding- No, it's I not you. <laughs> not you at all. <laughs> I've been using Zoom. I started using Zoom years ago um, for like my online coaching and stuff. And um, I'm still discovering things. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't know I did that. I know. Yeah. It's like user friendly, <gasps> but it could be so much more user friendly. Yeah. So yeah. how are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Is Renee um, able to join? Are we, do I need yes. to something? Okay. Do she should be her? jumping on. Okay, cool. You know, and, she's and, on the and, West Coast and she doesn't wake Coast. up all that early. So she, bless her heart. And this yeah. is, this is a hacked community call. So whoever joins, joins, and then we like at some point are going to edit it for really awesome things that we say off the cuff. Oh. We, we share them. So cool. Because I mean, we're going to say some awesome things at some point. And then like Marcia is here. One, one Hi, Marcia. Clients and favorite people. And she may have some questions. Hi. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we all just. Let me just check like, my text. Make sure Renee's not. Yeah. And we can, lost. I mean, this is the whole point. I mean, the whole point of these hacked community calls. It's, it's, it was something for me to be like, okay, I'm doing something of structure that is of yeah. service to anyone who may or may not want to participate. And selfishly, I want to see my people and like catch yeah. up and like, yeah. On and I think it's the perfect vehicle for that. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it, it checks many boxes, but the point is it's very informal. <laughs> like I always put, it's like, great. The people are like, well, what are you going to talk about today? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> like we may talk about how great your makeup is. Like we may, <laughs> we, that may be what we talk about. It it's the lighting. lighting. Can you? I have to show you what I'm facing because I show, just show. Happy. Ooh, yay! So you're in Virginia, Maryland, Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, I knew it was yeah. one of those states. Nature, lots of nature. Yeah, well, I I'm in Westchester. I can kind of show you. I don't know. It might be so bright that you can't see, but <gasps> no, it's beautiful. I, I got um, and then we got a lake house too. So we've been. I mean, it's. I'm really grateful because obviously. Yeah having two homes that are nice and outdoorsy in a quarantine is the way to go. We have a boat and we can be out on the lake and kayak. I saw and fish your and... boat photo. So beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's been, um, it's been kind of like an awesome vacation in some weird way. Oh, my dad mm -hmm. is oh, my dad. My dad comes. <gasps> I saw him on another call once. I my love it. He comes. gets on. I know my dad's here. Yeah. So like, I don't know. So how, how are you You're with your family? You're with your dad, right? My mom and dad are here. So it's the three of us. Yeah. yeah. And so how has it been for you? I mean, there's, it's obviously, okay. So for those, okay, wait, let's start over. For those of you who don't know Lauren, Lauren, can you tell us about how awesome you are? Please. Cause you're pretty stinking awesome. You don't just have like one thing going on or like. I know I have a few <laughs> things going on. It's just a product of my overactive of brain. Your, no, of your awesomeness. No, it's a product of your awesomeness. You don't put, you can't put Lauren in a box. God, no. Thank you. Please don't put me You're in a not box. not just anything. You're not just a gorgeous biohacker. You're not just a Broadway performer. You're not just anything. Who knows what you're going to do next? I know. It okay. all comes so, together. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm a Broadway performer. I have been doing that since I graduated college. Um, so I've been in the business for 20 years and I got into personal training because I wanted to complement my dancing career. I wanted my body to be healthy. I didn't want to work at a restaurant and <laughs> not sleep. Right. Yes. That was the, the smart path. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it just led me down a path and I started health coaching. So I have my own business where I do one-on-one -on -one and with my sister who should be here any second. That's fine. We, we will love her when, if she yeah. joins, if not, <laughs> it is totally, we're, we're fine. And so, you know, just to, just to be clear, you're in wicked. So it's not like some like you know, off Broadway, like you're yeah. Wicked, which is pretty yeah. cool. It's awesome. How long, very have you lucky. Been, how long have you been in Wicked, that production? Um, six years. Six years. Yeah. Not 
completely straight through because I did the tour off mm -hmm. and on and then I took like a short break and then I came to the, the Broadway uh, company a little over two years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's, to me, I've been talking a lot lately with a bunch of different people about um, stepping into our, oh, here's Renee, stepping, oh, and there's two E's, not one. I misspelled it. It's okay. She'll forgive me. Yeah. Um, so we, I've been, same. yes, I've been talking a lot lately with people about stepping into their celebrity. Hi, Hi Renee. Renee. And I, this is actually good. This is a great thing for me to share with both of you guys. I'm going to unmute you, Renee. So Renee and Lauren are sisters, and we're going to bounce around a lot. Renee's going to introduce herself in a second, but Renee, we're taking a wild left turn because I'm feeling called. I did this program called Stepping Into Your Celebrity with this fabulous lady named Dana Wilde. She's like a Midwestern, I, I don't know. It's just, she's just amazing. And I did a podcast with her years ago, and when I was on her podcast, she was so delightful. I was like giggling the whole time and blushing because I just like fell in love with her. There's just something about her essence that is just so delightful. But she yeah. did this program called Stepping Into Your Celebrity, where it helps us, us get out of our own way and really kind of claim um, our awesomeness and our unique awesomeness. Because Renee, you're a unique, awesome person, separate from Lauren's unique, awesome person. And I'm a unique, awesome person. And Marcy is a unique, awesome person. And my dad is a unique, awesome person. And we all are uniquely awesome. And we all kind of hide because we don't really want to step into our unique awesome. This was the things we do to ourselves. Like who am I to really, you know, sure. A lot of self-sabotage. Yeah. And, and so I've been talking about this with a lot of people through this quarantine period because it's just one of the things that keeps coming up. Um, and in your case, Lauren, in your case too, Renee, I mean, you guys have, both of you have such like really compelling celebrity stories. You know, you've done really impressive stuff. So like Renee, I know you were like on Dr. Oz. I don't remember how many years ago. And like Lauren, you're in Wicked. You know, like there are things that you kind of just put out there and it's just like, oh, well that's, and make people lean in. They're like, yeah. oh, oh, this person's actually really cool. They don't just seem cool. They actually have these really like, interesting credibility kind of nuggets. And so I've been talking to a lot of different people about kind of identifying each of ours kind of individual, you know, stories, celebrity characters that we kind of stand on. And that way when we enter a room, because sometimes we enter rooms and it's like, oh gosh, you know, there's a lot of really impressive people here. And do I really have something to contribute and be of value? Yeah. And if we're really you can hunt kind your of, shoulders forward before you even walk in the door, yeah, depending and, on the expectation. Yeah. And so what are the things that we can kind of stand on that no matter what room we're in, I suppose Oprah, and like Lin, Lin Manuel, and like Obama, like Tony Robbins, like the people that we te I tend to just be like, oh my gosh, there's oh yeah, up here. <laughs> Brene Brown, like Brene doesn't know we're gonna be friends one day, but you know. Like if they were in the room right now, that we would kind of be in our light. We would be in our light and we would own it, right? And yes. so Lauren and Renee, you guys do a great job at this in general. And it's just, you both are, are awesome. Thank sure. you. Oh, that reminds me a lot of um, this concept that I've been working on with my acupuncturist. He's actually more of a healer, uh -huh. but he's always telling me that I'm a star. Yeah. And when I first heard that, I was like, no, no, no. I'm not a star. <laughs> like, don't look at me. Like, <laughs> Yes, yeah. I'm a, I'm a performer. I've been performing my entire life, but I, my astrology sign is a cancer. I'm a crab. I like, <laughs> I'm very introverted. I don't want attention on me ever, mm -hmm. but like, if you just dissolve the ego and look at your innate talents, like, yes, I'm a star You're and I should a, own a being star. a star. Yes. And we all have that. We can all yes, be a star we, we without being stars like in our ego overreaching or, you know, yeah, there's always a balance. I didn't, know, I didn't even know you were an introvert until a year ago. <laughs> I fool everyone. Wait, who's I fool older? Everyone. Wait, who's older, first of all? I'm two years older. <laughs> okay. All right, but so I always we... looked up to her. She's my big sis. She's the performer. She was the one shoving me out of the way, you know. <laughs> I well, thought she was an extrovert. It's such a cool dynamic, too. Like, being sisters, and obviously you have a big sister who is a star, which that can go one of two ways in micro macro each moment, right? It can either in inspire you to develop your own light or it can make you be like, fuck this. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to, not even yeah, try. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Well, it's so, so easy with people that are close to you, especially like a sibling, you know, yeah. there can be sort of a, a rivalry and with, we can get into it, obviously the, the podcast that we started, I think we've really started to appreciate each other's talents. And when one is shining, I think the other one kind of like steps back because there's room for all of it. And yeah. who are we to try to you know, know everything or do everything? I know. Well, yeah. so, okay. So Lauren, I, we got a little bit of your story, how you ended up in this holistic kind of nutrition, wellness, movement kind of role. And jumping back, your dad is, is also, he's a dentist and a biohacker. Yeah. yeah. So he, you guys are the, the progeny of that. Exactly. <laughs> so Renee, tell us your story. Oh God. Well, I don't know how much Lauren shared. Um, None. <laughs> None. None. This is all None. you. Just all me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my, my journey was really more so dealing with my own health issues. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, right. We grew up with our dad that was like, you know, let's eat organic, let's be fit, you know, but I didn't really listen to it too much. But then in college, I got really sick with like adrenal dysfunction, mm-hmm. chronic fatigue, brain fog. Um, also had some serious low back injuries to stress fractures in my SI joint. Mm. I mean, it just felt like, like one thing after the other. And then junior year in college, I had mono. So then the Epstein bar virus, you know, was kicking in. Um, and I did the typical hop around to every doctor I could find mm-hmm. kind of whoever would take my insurance. <laughs> this is what happens when you're like 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're all like, like, they're like, you're 20. You're fine. Your labs are normal. Yeah. Yeah, that, that story. Yeah, that was something actually that one of my friends who I was coaching on this exact, you know, celebrity story, we were talking about that she was like that. She was younger and had this kind of chronic, undiagnosed illness, and and it's similar. Actually, I took my daughter recently. She's had this kind of chronic rib pain, and and I knew the doctor wasn't going to be able to do anything for her because it's not like well care; it's sick care, and if if it's not bad enough. Yeah. They're like, you're fine. And you're like, no, no, I don't feel fine. And then it, you have no choice but to take back your power and advocate for yourself and then figure it out. So yeah, I was like, pretty much forced to do that because yeah. I was like, I'm not going to keep living like this. I'm in my 20s. Like, this is crazy. I'm falling I'm freaking apart. <laughs> yeah. I'm sleeping 12, 13 hours a night. I'm like, and they're like, oh, you're just, you know, you're just a stressed out college kid. Just sleep more. I'm like, I like, I literally can't sleep more because it would be the whole day. <laughs> so I was like, there's something going on. So I, then I, I went down the path of, you know, I went to acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, um, got really into nutrition, ended up going back and getting my master's in nutrition because mm-hmm. I just wanted to know everything. Yeah. Um, and I had to kind of put the pieces together to figure out what was going on. And for me, you know, wasn't just one thing causing my health issues. It was really like a variety of things and I had to address all of them. Mm. Um, and it's hard because, you know, as a health practitioner, you want to be like this perfectly healthy Hi. person all the time. Hi, we're human. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have relapses all the time. I'm not going to lie about that. And I have to like take a step back and be like, okay, what was I doing last week? That's making me feel like that. You know, is it my sleep? Is it my stress? Is it my mm. diet? You know, I just have to like review what I'm doing, but in the process, I've learned a lot. Yeah. And that's really how I became a biohacker. You yeah. Know, I, Out of necessity. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got here. Um, well, it, it's a gift. So thank you for carrying around all of that, which then forces you to be this you know, Mecca of wisdom, right? Because you wouldn't know yeah. all of the stuff if you hadn't been kind of forced yeah. out of necessity to, to learn it. And again, too, right, like right. the, the bio-individualization of all of us, we talk about this so much, you know, all of us do, because we know just because, you know, something works for one person doesn't mean that's going to work for the other person. And how do we keep getting deeper and deeper into our individual biology? And as women, sorry, dad, the one lone guy on here at the moment, um, <laughs> as women, you know, depending on where we are on our cycle, it really makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And, you know, right, gosh, right. Like, you know, the amount of the burden of having to like figure out how to tweak all this stuff. And an epiphany I had this morning, um, you know, it's just, we've gotten so disconnected from nature as humans, like our current human society. We're yeah. so disconnected from our food sources. We're so disconnected from the earth. And I, I know I sound like such a hippie and cause I am a hippie. I'm, I'm kind of just you know coming to terms with the fact that I'm just a full blown <laughs> hippie and I don't, 
I should have I love it. in this. I'm so a hippie cool. at heart. Yeah. I really yeah. Are. Isn't that I, sort of the goal? We should I, all be sure. Yeah, I guess. It just, it's just I still feel a little embarrassed, you know, saying it. But I realized it, I think too, because I grew up on a farm, like a five I don't even know that about me, but I grew up on a five hundred acre farm. And so I grew up literally on the land. And, um, you know, my husband grew up in New York City and we actually had a great therapy session. I hope it's okay that I say this. We had a great therapy session last week and our therapist was saying how him growing up in the city and me growing up in, like kind of in the country on a farm, inherently we have such a different relationship with nature and how much we can trust nature, which all of us ultimately are, are hopefully intending to get back to trusting our intuitive knowing about because you'll go crazy trying to use data all day long to figure out wait is it the day i'm supposed to have spinach or is it the day i'm supposed to have salmon or is it the day that i'm not is it you go freaking nuts right. to yeah. kind of trust a flow of intuitive knowing and most of us are so disconnected from that we can't really trust what our brain says we, we crave the you know the sugar and we crave the salt and the fat and because we're so disconnected um but yeah it's just it's yeah. interesting and and getting back into touch with our intuitive knowing and using biohacking as a path for that so we can learn what we can trust and learn be like, hmm, I think that's my head doing something funky that's disconnected with my heart and my gut. Just, it's just also, yeah. to me, it's like, it all comes together when we have these conversations, especially as women, because I think honestly, women are even more complicated. I think men are right when they say that women are more complicated. <laughs> I think oh, hundred percent. True. Biologically, <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah, we're more complicated. Yeah, and there's no <laughs> research it. out there. We had, I think Dasha has been on one of these community yes, calls. Yes, right? yes, yeah. We had her on the podcast. We recorded with her last week, and we were just talking about how there's no research. Like, and I'm spending so much time at yeah. home right now, just searching through uh, scientific journals because I'm in this like fasting experiment. I'm experimenting with my CGM for my blood sugar. And I'm just looking for a little path of guidance. And there's nothing, there's nothing there. Wait, you just said CGM. C, what's that? Continuous glucose oh, monitor. Glucose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In my arm. I did that. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> I didn't really get so, any real information from that other than really? inexplicably sometimes, like there were two times over the 14 days where I couldn't figure out why, but like my blood sugar plummeted at night and I don't know. It's just like, huh, I think I need, I think I need more assistance when I do those type of experiments to actually, um, I don't know, track more of the overarching kind of lifestyle choices. I think next time I do it, I need to like, like, all right, who did I talk to? (laughs) How much did I drink? You know, like, what did I eat? What did I, like, really life, this, these kind of biohacking experiments it's just there's so much diversity in our lives. It's really hard to track stuff. How are you doing? It that? is. And are you like? Well, it's a huge project, and it's a I took. Job. It it really is, but I'm so fascinated by it. And if I do this thoroughly, then I know that I will be able to close this project at some point. Mm-hmm. Want to not use it? Mm-hmm. So I did it for yeah. um, a month and a half, and then I took a little bit of a break. And I went back to review my numbers and I was like, I don't, this, none, I can't connect the dots. Like I didn't input enough information. I had so many questions. I felt like I had a good handle on it, but looking back, I'm like, this project is incomplete. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm doing it again. And all the things that I expected out of it, which were like food and exercise inputs were not producing the outputs I that I was seeing. I so now I'm tracking everything. Yeah. So, literally the conversations I'm having, like you yeah. said, did I have a response to it? Was I excited? Was wow. I sad? <laughs> yeah. Brain chemistry. Like you can't yeah. count our freaking brain chemistry. Yes. Watching television because yeah. my blood sugar yeah. stays pretty low when I have a, a balanced meal or balanced for me, my, what works for me. But then I go and turn on the television and no matter what it is, like through the roof. Yeah. I'm like, it has nothing to do with food. Yeah. What about and sauna, Lauren? I just heard a study yesterday that saunas increased. Have you seen that? I did the sauna this morning and it did. It spiked my blood sugar because we know that's a stressor, right? It's a hormetic mm-hmm. stressor. And so now I'm looking at how much stress exactly is right for me because yes. I don't really like sweating, but the more that I do it, the more comfortable I am doing it, right? That's what we want. Like push through the uncomfortable to get to the comfortable. hmm but how much stress so that I can get, and I'm seeing the hormetic stressor by looking at the blood sugar mm-hmm. and I want that spike, but does the spike come back down? 
And, then and does it come down it. appropriately too? Because I tend yeah. to come back down too much. I have like relative oh, hypoglycemia. Overcompensate. So this is my dad. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So like every time. So I, my blood sugar, I'm naturally higher. I think I've got some of the genetic predispositions to just have a higher resting blood sugar, which also I think correlates with um, a higher chance of at least late onset um, Alzheimer's. I have that gene as well. We have that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me, I'd be curious because for me, my resting blood, like when I, I'm fasted, I do pretty much intermittent fasting every day. Um, so certainly I wake up in the morning fasted, I check my blood sugar and it tends to be like 108, 109. It tends to be high. And, you know, does that necessarily, is that bad necessarily? I mean, no. And, you know, do we think it would be better if it were lower? We think so. But again, the research, we don't have enough research, especially for women, women who are really active, like, I could, yeah, I don't know. there's not even research yeah. for non-diabetics. Period. Right. All of the research is for mostly type two, actually. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, and then type one. But you yeah. don't see any non-diabetics, and then you especially don't see for women. Yeah. So I'm like, screw it. I'm doing my own experiment. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you are. So report and back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> report back. Oh, here. Yeah. So I'm just noticing that food, I mean, I have my food intolerances and I know what they are, but I'm really noticing stress, the way that I respond emotionally to certain factors, mm. something on TV, a conversation, it, just an anxiety, like, Oh, am I going to be late for this? Like, and, yeah, and, and you can't, Mike's here. Find, well, you can't find either like, like, okay. So certain days, you may be more reactive to stress, but that could have been because of something you ate or could have been because of poor sleep yeah. or it could have been because you didn't work out. So it's like, I have, yeah. I always kind of draw a star and it's like, you can't disconnect the star. It's a hole. Exactly. And, and so okay. you kind Not of like, A to B. It's yeah. A to Z and back around again. Yeah. So everything's like kind of flowing and there is no perfection. It's this kind of process where you just kind of keep going around, keep going around, keep going around. Yeah. 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 But that's like the quantification, which I love. And I know some, so many people are like, you can't rely on, on the numbers. You have to go off of how you feel, or if you're just so um, connected or attached to the numbers, you're never going to like really be in tune with your body. But I'm like, I'm going to use it fully and then I'm going to be done with it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can combine them. Yeah. Yeah. You use the data along with learning the intuition piece, like you were saying, mm -hmm. like, I think a lot of people struggle with the intuition piece for a while. Like, I think like now I can truly be like, I want carbs. I need carbs. I want protein. I need protein. Like I can feel it, mm -hmm. but it kind of took me the years of looking at the data, food journaling, really taking note of all that. Now I can use my intuition. Right. But I think it takes years to get to that point. Yeah. And it totally years. depends on your history. Like right. depending on how. Again, I mean, everyone most is of different. Us, yeah. I think most of us yeah. have a dysfunctional eating growing up, you know? Oh, because, absolutely. I did. I did like everything wrong growing up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, stuff had to learn. How do you learn? <laughs> yeah. That's, it's totally fine. So, yeah. so right now you guys are doing the podcast. Obviously you just had Dasha. Um, yeah. what else, so what else besides the podcast do you guys have going on? Like during this period, Renee, you're on the West coast. What's, what's going on the West coast? Yeah. Um, I mean, haven't really left my house in two months, so. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> yeah, really just focusing on the podcast. We've had some great guests on the last couple of weeks, so we're getting ready to wrap up season two in a couple of weeks, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've been running these monthly seven-day challenges during the quarantine. So we used to do like a 21-day challenge, um, but we shortened it to make it seven days a little bit easier for people during the quarantine time. Um, and it's fun. We just do like super basic stuff, like eat whole foods, cut out the crap, cut out the alcohol, the sugar, uh, exercise daily, get your sleep, get your water, get your sunshine, you know, all the things I think a lot of people aren't doing right now. Yeah. So it's like a little seven day reboot. I love it. Where can people find that? Is that on your, is that the biohacking Babes podcast website or where do we? Um, the, the biohacker babes.com. The biohacker babes.com. Okay. Yeah, anyone yeah. Wants to learn We're on our Instagram. It was interesting. We were trying to figure out how to market this seven day challenge. Yeah. One, because I think emotionally, a lot of people don't want to be challenged right now because they're just I got enough overwhelmed challenge. with yeah. uncertainty and anxiety in the an world. Opportunity. It's a seven day opportunity. Opportunity. I like that. 
<laughs> yeah. But then it was like, do we call it a fitness challenge? We call it a nutrition challenge. And we kind of backed away from both of those words because we do want it to be an opportunity to just reset and really simplify. Yeah. Take because I'm seeing, back. yeah, I'm seeing people go and want to, we can't yes. control anything. This you can control. Oh, we should just right. have you do our marketing. That's perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but people are really are going in one of two directions now. Either they they ordered a Peloton and they're working out three times a day, like cannot cannot get off that bike, <laughs> yeah. or they just can't bring themselves to do anything. And we're trying to meet in the middle. Like this yeah. challenge is not to break your body down and to get ripped in a week. It's just simplifying and and hopefully teaching people how to to listen to their bodies because we don't do it. I know it's it. to me. It's always again. It's always about a middle path. You know, and I know you guys know that, right? Because that you, once right. you start going down this rabbit hole, you realize, oh, okay, wait. If I just do physical fitness, I'm not gonna get where I am looking to go. Like it's just you, you very quickly you reach a, a sticking point. It's that's why I love kind of the the star or spider web or snail shell analogy because like you gotta keep checking in with your sleep and checking in with nutrition and checking in with your physical fitness and your mental fitness and. I say the I it in hacked or portal we're changing the name. Ooh, it's like a surprise, but we're rebranding hacked. It's very exciting. Um, and I'm working on kind of a online course and a book and a workbook to kind of articulate, you know, the things that we know, right? The things that we all practice that it's like as simply as possible. If you if you just pay attention to these five things and just keep incrementally doing better and better in these five areas, you're gonna it's the same thing as the book that I wrote for inner strength. It's there's always kind of like five areas that if you focus on, you can get change in a complicated system. So like for inner strength, for overall fitness, when I look at government, like one day I may run for, for politics just because I cannot stand the fuckery of our leadership, generally speaking. Um, but like I don't know what you mean. Often, yeah. You can't just, it, like as a politician, you can't just look at the economy. You can't just look at healthcare. You can't just look at education or the justice system or immigration. You have to be working on all of them at the same time because it's an interconnected system. And if you just incrementally get better in each of these areas and have really good task force in these areas and have everything kind of simultaneously moving in the right direction, then we can actually have some positive change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I it's know you're big about like the roots of the tree into the ground and yeah. creating the structure. Because we got to grow people. We're going in the wrong fucking direction a lot of the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my favorite thing about this challenge is that uh so we're doing daily live workouts and they're not just like sweat session we're doing with the seven days we're doing a chakra per day we're working Love through it. all seven chakras so Love i start out by talking about like the mental emotional effects that are maybe manifesting physically in your body so we can sort of connect all of those things it's like Love it. are we not grounded are we not able to connect to others do we feel like a loss of a connection. Yes. How does that manifest? Does it manifest yes. as low back pain? Do we have fatigue and headaches? How can we do a simple dynamic exercise that will maybe just integrate that and bring some balance? Is it going to make your back pain go away? No, but it's going to help that circle. It's going to help yeah. connect. Incremental, dots. incremental, incremental. Yeah. Awesome. I would totally yeah. do that. I yeah, would hang, I would hang adds up on top of the other one. Yeah. No, you guys, you guys are awesome like that. So, okay. So that's on the website and Instagram. Yeah, everyone should follow you on Instagram. I love everything that you share. It's it's great. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. Lauren, Lauren's a rock star on there. Well, so are you, Renee. Both y'all. So are you, Renee. Yes, yes. Renee. Both of you guys. <laughs> um, all right. Thank so you're you. doing that. Are you guys? Are you guys? Um, you know, working on any other kind of strategic partnerships or what else? What else going on? You want one? I would be your strategic partner. <laughs> Yes. Sure. <laughs> I, I would be a strategic partner. <laughs> no, the only project really honestly is the pot the podcast and the challenge is taking up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I've taken this huge pause to go back and, and fill in all the education holes that mm -hmm. I have been wanting to fill in. Cool. Because it's a great time for that. Always yeah. more. I just can't get enough. No, so great. and really trying to digest stuff. I'm not just like playing 10 podcasts a day. Like I'm really trying to sit with stuff and recycle it and listen to it more than once and, and then implement and then integrate it. my yeah. experiments. Yeah. So, I mean, the blood sugar one is just like my big project right now. Like I have this journal and I'm writing on every little thing. I'm, I'm doing 
a workout facet and then not, and I'm trying to like very um, incrementally change all the variables because I can never do that in my New York life. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, right. the, the integration, I mean, this, this has been a period of growth, I think for, for everyone, whether they like it or not, how resistant they may be to the growth. But this has been, I mean, I know for myself the last two months, I've grown so much my personal stuff, you know, the areas that I still was blocked in terms of, you know, really, you know, being able to, to thrive. And there were choices I was making when you have more flexibility and more freedom. I think it's, it's easier to still engage in maybe avoidant behavior or, you know, obsessive behavior or whatever. And, and people sure, sure as hell can find avoidant and obsessive behavior from home as well. For me, yeah. I'm fine tuned enough that I'm kind of aware of it. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm trying to grocery shop again for like the third time in like a week and it's not necessary. Like there was like, there were things that I was identifying that like I kept, cause I'm, I'm like that. I'm all about like, you know, the things I can control. And I'm like, yeah, I don't need to grocery shop again. It's okay. We have enough food. Like stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think physically just being stuck at home puts your, your mental space kind of in a box too. And it's like, okay, you hit the ceiling, you hit the wall. Okay. You sort of like bounce around and then it's like, do you find this level place? Cause you can't escape really. You can't avoid, like you said, so it really makes you like stare at that wall and go like, how do I feel about this wall? What's yeah. happening with me right now? Yeah. And it's an external reflection always. So you guys are both meditators, right? Both of you, Renee yes. and Lauren. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are your go-to kind of mindful and meditation practices? So I do, I do TM. Um, but I took a break from that when this all started, I started a 40 day prosperity meditation. I don't know if you've heard of it, but, um, there's like a a hand gesture that you do and there's a a very easy chant and for four minutes you do this chant. And I was doing a stack where I sat in front of my juve light every mm-hmm. morning and did my chant. It's been very rainy here. So I've been really relying on my, um, my red light and my human charger. Mm. Um, and it's just, I sit there and I visualize what I want with cool. ease. With ease. Yeah. How about you and I? That's great. Um, so I use a little bit of technology with my meditation. Mm-hmm. So right now my, my go-to is the brain tap. Sure. Are you, are you familiar with the brain tap? Yeah, I have, I have one here. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I had the older version years ago before like brain tap was established. And I don't know, I just like really fell in love with it. I like having a little bit of that visual and audio stimulation. Mm-hmm. And then I just focus on my breath and I do that for 30 minutes a day. What's your experience? Do you go? Like, do you do you experience like a transcendental, like no? Where I go? I, yeah. So, <laughs> where, where to be I honest, oh, I'm sometimes back. sometimes I fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Apparently, but, you needed to sleep. Yes, that that is my perspective. I'm like, I I have obviously needed the nap. So sometimes I fall asleep. Sometimes I do go somewhere and I come back and I'm like, I wasn't sleeping. I don't know where mm-hmm. I was, but I feel really good. Yeah, I have like amazing amazing. mental clarity when I wake, wake up from that. Mm. Um, like I feel better after a brain tap session than I do after a full night of sleep. Mm. My well, brain is just a brain tap right there. Fire. We'll record that and we'll share it and tag them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I know. Right. I should be like sponsored by them. I love it. Oh, so you should, much. <laughs> you should No, And that's the thing. I, yeah. I think one of the things that's come out of this period and one of the reasons I was kind of asking you guys, because in terms of revenue generation, right? Like, I mean, I had a bricks and mortar business. I know you guys have other, um, you know, revenue drivers, but during this time, it's like, all right, well, we're still adding value. So how do we adjust kind of the business model so we can get paid and live, even though the way we were used to do things is, is different now. Um, and it's been a challenge a lot of, especially for people in the fitness um, sphere, because so many fitness classes, fitness providers have just started just doing tons of free content, which is great. And then how do you transition that free content into revenue? Because we we all have to pay our rent and, and, you know, have food and and all that fun stuff. So are you guys still doing one-on-one coaching or how are you? Yeah. I'm still seeing one-on-one clients for the people that 
I have some moms that are just overwhelmed with children at home, but I do have some people that are pretty regularly still training and it's, it's gotten easier virtually. And as far as, you know, content, I, I'm all for putting content online, but that's really why we have the podcast free yeah. content. We're trying to educate and empower people. Yeah. As far as like free workouts, I have been very resistant to that. I'm trying to hold on to my value and my power because when this ends, then what, what happens? <laughs> mm-hmm. So we, yeah, we created the challenge, which is fairly inexpensive, but it's, valuable it's very valuable but if you want just some free sweat session for an hour you can easily turn on your instagram live at any time of the day and find something but yeah, i also think too when you're charging someone for something it 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 sets kind of a, a commitment and a value proposition that um is of service to the person who's paying the money because it's like you're you're signing up for this and okay i i paid the money i'm committed i'm doing it as opposed to yes. if it's just free, it's really easy to kind of bow out and then the exactly. person doesn't get the benefit. So yeah, I think totally. that there's a lot to be said for, for continuing programs like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely seen that a lot over the years. Like when I first started seeing clients, I was very resistant to charging maybe what I should have been charging. Mm-hmm. And then you hear the stories, well, I can't afford that. And this is going on, whatever. And I'd be like, okay, well, what can you pay? I'll take whatever kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then those clients never followed through. Yeah. They never were successful. They missed appointments. And then when I found when I charged my full fee, those people were, they were there every week on the call, super successful. So you're right. It is like that mindset. Well, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so for people that are approaching life from a scarcity mindset that I don't have enough money, You know, I'm not really sure if you're worth it. You know, that that's demonstrating kind of a relationship that someone has with life. And that's gonna definitely impact the results that they get. And we wanna love that and understand that and hold space for that and be compassionate. Yeah. yeah. From that place, but I get it. I've been there. And here's why that is not ultimately of service for anyone. So here's what I propose. I propose we pay the full price. And, you know, after the six weeks of you participating and showing up, if you show up every time, we can talk about the end of the program if you get a bonus and then you get something, yeah. or something, you know, and you, you show that you're willing to work with them, that you're going to earn their trust and earn what they got it and then you got it. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well, that was another reason for starting the podcast too, because I wanted to have options for people. Like- Hey, I want to work with you. I can't afford it. Okay. Listen to the free podcast every week. There's tons of information. So much value in your podcasts. Thank you. Yeah. The next step, $19. You can do a seven day challenge and you learn so much. You get resources you get forever, you know, <laughs> and then there's the one-on-one, the full investment. Yeah. But I wanted to have those options for people to meet them wherever they are. Yeah. I love it. I'm a fan. There's also like a stair stepping involved because I know when I work yeah. with one on one clients, sometimes it is really daunting to get someone caught up so quickly. Mm-hmm. And nobody wants to walk in and start working with a personal trainer and wait four weeks to really get into a program. But sometimes it requires that much education and, for lack of a better term, like babying to get uh-huh. them up. Yeah, meeting them where, where you they can are. even like begin this opportunity. Mm-hmm. So I think the education up front is so valuable learn the stuff for yourself. We're going to give you the tools to do your own research. We're not telling you what to think or to feel or to do. We're just putting the information closer to you and it's your responsibility to yeah. digest. It. Yeah. Ultimately people are only going to get the results that are commensurate to the amount of work that they did. And so yeah. having that be exactly. the agreement from the beginning is kind of important. Yeah. And I've seen some amazing progress with the clients that are continuing to train with me right now. A lot of people are like, well, we're going to be sitting through a computer screen. Like there's, there's no way that one, I'll really be motivated or that you can correct me or, you know, because feeling someone's energy is such a big thing about what I do at least. But um, I've seen some magic happen and I don't even really know how to explain it, but the people that are committed Oh yeah, I definitely, I energy goes back and forth very quickly. Of course, because that's, I mean, I think we all, we all, we all know that energy is not a time and space thing. It's like not, yeah. 
It does go so, through the computer. <laughs> yeah, because if you're, if you're loving someone, it really, I use the word love, but you're loving someone, you're paying attention and caring, that, that bends time and space. Absolutely. Period. And yeah. stuff. So yeah. if you're dialed in, and I know both of you guys really dial into people and you authentically care, you're very present with people, that, that definitely goes beyond being in the same physical space. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that even was eye opening for me. I wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, I've done virtual sessions when clients are on vacation, but I've never committed for this period of time. Yeah. So it opened up my eyes. I've had like some big mental openings since I've been here. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. Well, I want to let Marcia and my dad and Hoban, if he's going to happen or Hoban, I don't know. (laughs) It's actually a really funny story. I was hanging out with Mike recently and I heard him say his name. I always just said Hoban. And he's like, Hoban. And I was like, wait, if I've been saying your name wrong this whole time. <laughs> like, oh, no. Hoban. Hoban. There he Mike. is. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. We love you. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. So, Hi. Nice to see you. Good to see you. How are <laughs> you? Fantastic talk so far. Love it. Oh, thanks for oh, tuning thanks. in. Oh, my pleasure. Are you a New Yorker? I'm in Jersey. 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 I like how everyone gets that look on their face as soon as they say as soon as I say Jersey, we're like they smell something bad. <laughs> My husband's oh, I think, from Jersey. Yeah. Oh really? I think the smart one. South, South Jersey. Oh okay, that's that's basically Pennsylvania, but yeah, a little different. Yeah, he's yeah. Pra- practically Philadelphia. Yeah. 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 Very true. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Nice to see you. Good to see you all. Anyway, wonderful talk. I don't want to take away from it. Please keep going. You could never. You're like whipped cream and sprinkles. You're just like, what, what isn't better with whipped cream and sprinkles? Great. Sugar and fat. Love it. <laughs> Everybody loves whipped cream and sprinkles. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, they're not sprinkles if you're from Jersey. What are they in Jersey? Right. Uh, what are they? Or maybe that's a uh, South Jersey thing. What is it, there it, another it, J. Word? J- 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 what is that word? I'm Googling it. Oh, I have no idea. No, it's, you, you it's see, I'm on for four J- seconds and I'm throwing things off already. This is, this is bad. We're learning. We're expanding our knowledge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's about the wrong, wrong things. I learned this from my husband. Jimmy's. 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 Yes, I have, Jimmy's. I've never heard that expression in my life. I think it's South Jersey, PA. Jimmy's and uh, Hoagie's. Yeah, yeah, that's a South Jersey thing. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> apparently there's a big um, there's a big debate over Jimmy's that Jimmy's maybe only refer to the chocolate sprinkles, and, <laughs> and apparently people are divided because it's like should the chocolate and the rainbow versions be referred to differently? It's just like wow, things, now that's a good controversial things, topic. You know. The things you learn on a community call. <laughs> Biohacking and sprinkles clearly go hand in hand. Because they're totally <laughs> natural and not artificial and like real food and yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone has any questions, feel free. Or oh, my dad has a question. Dad. Yeah. So uh, you guys were talking about babying, or I would say baby steps. And Pam, I had a nice conversation with Graham yesterday. I saw something on TV that kind of resonated. You know, a lot of times I say to you about, well, give me the one-on-one introductory version because, you know, you lost me. John Cleary, habit stacking. I talked with Graham about that. You guys familiar with that? Does that work for some of your more introductory clients? Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely, because that's how you lock in habits. And if you can match one, well, a, a newer habit that you're working on with an older habit, then you'll just lock it in. So I think just an easy one, um, my meditation with the red light, no brainer, um, grounding and sunshine usually go together, right? If there's sunshine out, um, or you can meditate outside while you're grounding. Yeah. I think the, the more, the merrier, especially if it's in nature, it's comprehensive anyways. I don't know if that answers your question or if you have a specific yeah. question about something you're trying to accomplish. No, just, just stretching you know. while you're watching TV. Easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, when you get introduced to a new client, and you, it's like when you're giving a talk, right? You got to know your audience, so you can tell right away you're losing somebody. So I, I didn't think I was offering anything that was profound, but I just thought that fit for a beginner, right? And like Pam, I talk, talk to Graham soon, give her a call because she thinks she's doing great, and I'm not sure she is. 
Yeah. So I threw that at her, you know, just in terms of you really doesn't want to do her exercises when she's leaning at the same thing. I said, well, okay, you have a cup of coffee every morning. All right. That's what this guy said, you know, after you have your cup of coffee, don't do 15 reps of six different exercises. Do five reps of one. And if you feel better tomorrow, do more. But to make that reward thing, right, link to, okay, I'm going to have a glass of orange juice every morning. So I'll link that with something. So that, that yeah. to be vulnerable and perfectly honest, that, that works really well for me. The other yeah. thing that reminds me of Jim Quick said something about just tell people to do one. Like he made the joke around just just floss one tooth. It's like no one ever stops after one. <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> it's like it's true. So every night yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna floss one tooth. And then of course <laughs> don't just floss one. Yeah, I love That's that. So true. Mm. Yeah, once yeah. you get into that rhythm. And I think like picking like a weekly habit, you know, maybe like week one, all you think about is drinking more water. Mm -hmm. Week two, you follow up with that, but you add one more vegetable a day. Week three, you do five push-ups a day or something. Like, like you said, just one at a time. Next thing you know, it's been two months and you have all these new habits and you don't even think about yeah. it. But the circling back, I think is what really locks it in. I like that analogy of the star, Pam. Circling yeah. back, revisit, revisit, revisit. Instead of just going down the linear checklist. Yeah, nothing's linear. <sighs> <laughs> but it kind of like the beginning of the quarantine, it, it felt like that a little bit. Because yeah. all of a sudden, everyone was online, everyone's giving free content. There's all these things. It, I could have sat on Instagram all day long and just tuned into everyone's call or live workout or meditation. Yeah. And I had to step back from that. I was like, am I showing up because I, I want to support them, which is a lovely thing. Or am I showing up because I, this is what I want and need right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like, you know, in creating this series was really selfish. It was really for me. And then inviting people to come. It's like, you know what, like if it, if it serves a purpose in someone's life and they want to pop on and they want to watch it later or whatever, great. And fundamentally, I'm doing this selfishly for me. And I'm certainly going to include it for other people if it's beneficial for other people to join in. Um, but I definitely, like, certainly don't take it personally, depending on how many people show up or not. Because I'm like, I don't care if I'm the only one on here. I'm going to have a ball. And there was one time that yeah. the guests didn't even show up. And I was like, well, I'm still going to have a awesome. ball. <laughs> I was like, Amazing. fine, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a little happy hour. It is. Yeah, and great. you know, community, right? We know communal fitness is is a thing and figuring out how in this, you know, hopefully temporary situation where we can't physically be together, how do we make sure that we have that connection with ourselves, that connection with other people, and the connection with nature? Because those are the three kind of things that we have to make sure we're connected to um, to really be healthy and fit. So, yeah. yeah. Nature is huge. I never realized how important it was to me until I was stuck in it. Mm. I don't know how I will leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'll come up to the lake house. Yeah. So there's the cottage on the lake. So you can come up to the lake house and be out on the lake and we can camp by the lake house in a really easy way. So it's, we can camp right by the lake, but still have a bathroom and a house, <laughs> you know? So we're going to a little bit of glamping. I love it. Yeah. Once this, once this <laughs> shifts, we're going to be, we're going to be doing biohacking fun excursions at the lake house and people can camp. People can sleep inside if they want. We're going to barbecue. Everyone can be invited. It's, awesome. It's going to be cool. good. So when you come back to New York, it's only an hour and 45 minutes from the city. And Mike, it's not far from Jersey. You get your ass to the lake. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> I love it. Marcia, do you have any questions for the sisters? No, I think it was uh, amazing. I'm following them now. <laughs> you know, it's like they say, uh, it's, I'm still at the start of this, like getting to know more about biohacking and really like about women. It's, it's kind of tough because like you said, there's a lot of information out there, but most studies are actually made on men. So um, so I'm kind of like still diving into the general biohacking, but I'm very interested in knowing that. So it's good. Yeah. 
the best way to start is just to get a journal and write everything down that comes through your brain. Yeah. Everything and your habits too, right? Yeah. 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 And just know that because something worked for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. I think that's so important for the female biohackers out there. Yeah. I've seen so much of that on Instagram. Sorry to keep coming back to like all the free content. And there's been like this explosion of experts on Instagram and people are like, drink this, eat this. I'm like, who says that that's good for you? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's why I don't recommend supplements to people because I'm like, I'm, I'm trying them out on myself (laughs) and half the time. I don't know. So careful with that. Yeah. So I had an interesting experience with fasting years ago. Mm -hmm. I went to a health conference where Dan, actually Dan Pompa, I don't know if anyone follows Dan Pompa. Mm -hmm. It was his conference and literally everyone was fasting at the conference, all the attendees. Mm-hmm. And it was really nice. They would serve lunch at the conference, but lunch would be at 3 p.m. So they Ooh. would be like, okay, Ooh. fast all day. We'll serve you lunch at like 2 or 3 p.m. Um, mm-hmm. And then you're free to go out for dinner or whatever. And I couldn't do it. I mm. had to have breakfast. I had to bring a snack before the 3 o'clock lunch. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Mm. How come this entire room of thousands of people are fasting and I can't do it? Because it's not for me. Yeah. No. It's not. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, whether it's biohacking or any of these, you know, conversations around lifestyle, it's like, you got to first and foremost, be true to yourself, figure out what yeah. the fuck that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> understanding the stress response because fasting is a stressor. It's just, we mm-hmm. all react and handle stress a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. I did a fasting experiment this past week. And it was only going to be a 24 hour fast. And I did it because Dasha has been doing this t- Tuesday fasting mm-hmm. Do it with me. I have never felt worse in my entire life. Well, what how happened? long did you feel worse for? So yes. Yeah, so tell us the full, like, did you feel Details. worse and then better worse? Like for the next five days, like it, trickled- again, it could be like a month later that you suddenly are so much better, right? Like, how do you even know? Well, I was resistant to it initially because I've just always had this mental block about fasting. Like I read about it. I I get the benefits from the autophagy. I'm like, scientifically, this makes sense to me, but I had a mental block. Like I'm really active. I have to eat. So I was like, I need to do this to just break down that mental block and see what's on the other side. I was like, I can do a 24 hour fast dinner from dinner the previous night to dinner the next day. And I felt pretty good through the morning because I do intermittent fasting pretty often. Like I'll eat a pretty late breakfast. I don't mm-hmm. eat right when I wake up. Um, I worked out, I felt amazing. And then like a- shortly after 12 o'clock noon, mm-hmm. my head was throbbing. I couldn't focus. I couldn't get anything done. And I had hunger, but I can deal with hunger pains. Mm-hmm. And now that I know with my glucose monitor, my hunger doesn't always correlate to low blood sugar, which I thought for many years was like, mm-hmm. I have low blood sugar. Interesting. Um, were you wearing your glucose monitor this day? You fasted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was actually part of the experiment. I wanted to see if it stabilized my blood sugar because that is supposed to be a benefit of fasting. And it, and it did, it was really stable through the entire day, even like once I broke the fast. Um, but I don't know if this is too much information, but I was oh. like, <laughs> so we're here. I was peeing excessively and I I was drinking water and I had some coffee, but I wasn't drinking any more liquids than normal. I was peeing like crazy. I think my adrenals and my kidneys were like, no, we're so stressed out (laughs) because it is a stressor. So I just had to, I had to figure out at what point do I need to stop? I also just have so many questions because that's just how I am. I question everything. I said questions. So like, couldn't it have been that you were peeing incessantly because you were clearing stuff out? that yes. maybe you hadn't been able to before? I mean, I don't know. Like, I just have questions. Yeah. I don't know anything. <laughs> it's one of my mantras in life. I know nothing. I just have a lot of questions. You mean, like, was it like a Herxheimer response? Was, was I having well, like, like a... Yeah, like, when, if you fast, then, I mean, theoretically, right, you're able to process old, you know, cellular waste, and, and your body is then kind of in a, a flush situation, potentially. Exactly. Yeah. Possibly. Do I want to try it again? <laughs> but I'm terrible. Like I broke my fast. I had a, a 
a wonderful dinner and I just couldn't recover. My head hurt for the rest of the day. I was intensely fatigued as if I ran a marathon. Mm-hmm. I slept horribly. I hate when I ran my one marathon. That was the worst fucking feeling in my life. That next day, ugh. I was like, I'm never doing this I again. Never. I was like, I will never. I'm never doing this again. This is a horrible idea. So if that's how you felt after your 24 hour fast, by all means, don't do it again. Yeah. But I am curious because there are all those variables and I want to think outside the box. Could it have been this? Could it have been that? I was pretty miserable, but maybe I do a little bit less of a fast, just pull back that wall a little bit so that I can question. Yeah, it's just think there's just so many variables. That's the thing with all this. It's just like, huh. You know, and at the end of the day, each of us, yeah. that's why I love the concept of just empowering people to make their own choices and yeah. be in control of their behavior. It's like, you know, yeah. you got to do it. You got to figure it out for yourself. And obviously you yeah. are healthy and you have energy. And, and there's a lot of things that I, like, I don't do a lot of libo too. And I'm actually have one in the house now and I'm going to start doing it because I really believe in you know, if it, what it has the power to do and, and help us see is like, I feel pretty freaking great all the time. Like I have tons of energy. I'm really happy. Like I don't, I'm like, I don't feel like I need to be going crazy trying stuff. Cause I'm like, I mean, as I start to as I start to age, I mean, I'm 40 something. So it's like, like not like I haven't started to age, but it's like, I, I don't feel 40 something. And so I feel like if I start to feel closer to my age, then I'll be like, Oh, I should probably start doing with two or start you know, tweaking my nutrition more or tweaking my sleep or just like right now, I'm like, I have, everything's pretty, is working pretty well. So I'm going to keep making good choices, but I don't feel like I need to go to any kind of extreme measures to, to right. try to do a longer fast or, you know, get into a more intense, like maybe live O2 to me, get up with that on the mask. I don't know if people know what live O2 is. I know you guys do, but it's the oxygen trainer. So you train with the mask and you train at lower, um, you know, percentage of oxygen. It's, it's kind of a commitment to like train like that. As I haven't done it yet. I mean, I've done it, but I don't like do it regularly. I haven't used my one at home yet. Do you use that? Livo two? My dad has one in the basement. I haven't used it, use it in here, but I have used it in the past. But it's not part of your regular routine. No. Renee? I no. I Mike? don't even have access to one here. Hoban? Hoban. <laughs> Are you a big Livo 2 person? Um, I've never actually been on one. Bob hasn't made you do it? <laughs> I'm a lot bigger than Bob. He doesn't make me do a lot of things. <laughs> I, I have it. power. Yeah, you get I to think choose. it's a great experiment. I, do we need to be doing it all the time? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the one time yeah. I did it, I felt like ass. Like, he warned me. Like, the Herx, you, you do, like, two minutes in – and he's like, you just be prepared. You're going to feel kind of like maybe you have the flu. And I'm like, great. Because you're dumping all of this metabolic waste into your bloodstream and it feels like shit. And it takes a few minutes before you kind of clear it out and then feel better. And he wants to move on. I really, it was like an understatement. I kind of had like, I used to get panic attacks when I was younger. So I can relate to people that struggle with panic attacks. Meditation and a lot of lifestyle changes makes me not get panic attacks anymore kind of had a panic attack when I did the Livo 2. I felt awful. And I just wanted to get the mask off my face. And he's like, no, leave the mask on. It'll, it'll make it go clear. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm no. taking the mask off my face. So I feel like I'm going to die. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> I don't want I, that. That's how I felt when the first time I did the Carol bike. Really? You know, a lot bad. of people, so there's certain <laughs> people and it seems like this is one of the things I'm kind of obsessed with because again, we all want to be of service. We want to help people and we're all very different. And so the types of activities that work well for me may not be the types of activities that work well for others. And so I definitely have identified a a subset of clients at ACT. It seems like you fall into that bucket where their nervous system doesn't seem to tolerate really, really high intensity workouts they really feel like awful. And, it, and it's not yeah. just like a mental blow. It's not just like, oh, get comfortable being uncomfortable. No, it's no, not it's- that. It's like there's a sensitivity in the nervous system where it just is no bueno, like no bueno. Yeah, that's. I felt like I had like a nervous system crash after. Yeah. I was just done for the day. But then I, I, I kind of biohacked it a little bit since, you know, our mom and dad have a Carol bike back in Maryland. Mm-hmm. So when I am home and I do it, I 
I have to have a really good HRV. I have to have eaten within like two hours before. Mm -hmm. I have to do it at nighttime. Interesting. And then I feel fine. Interesting. Closer to bedtime. Closer to bedtime. What's your HRV, guys? <laughs> My HRV is so not, it has not gotten any better over the last year and a half. And I'm like, <laughs> My HRV is insanely high and I am Mine shocked. Too. What? Yeah, I'm still shocked too. Mine's average like 130. <laughs> Yeah, mine's like 140. And everyone else it's I talk to mine. is like 40. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't 40, know. 40 is good for me. If I hit 40, like if I, my average is 40, that's like really, I'm like, something, something's good. And I just am like, huh, I don't know what it means. I'm like, huh, I'm going to yeah. keep, keep doing my five star, you know, physical health, mental health, communal yeah. health, nutritional health. I mean, I, my sleep is awesome. Then yeah. maybe that's your number. That's what I don't know. It's it's rel. I mean, that's the weird thing about HRV is it's relative to you. So I'm so pretty, curious, pretty don't you wish? Good. I mean, I wish I had my HRV from the time I was a kid. Like I, I'm oh, so I know. curious. Like when I was a kid, what was my HRV? And then at what points in my life? Because my dad's here, so he knows my life. There, there's certain defining things that happened to me in my life that were particularly traumatizing. And so it's like, well, like before my mom got sick, was my HRV? you know, like much higher. And then there was like this kind of traumatic event that, that kind of sent me spinning in this, you know, out of balanced way, which I, I trust and I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for every single one of those things, yeah. but just curious, you know, out of curiosity, like, yeah, <laughs> I, I wish I could have the metrics for, from everything in my entire life. <laughs> we should just put aura rings like on, on babies. Day one in the hospital. <laughs> my my daughter has the same ring size as me. And so um, oh, my next call is on. I guess we got to wrap up. Rats, I could talk to you guys all day. Um, my daughter uses my aura ring sometimes. So sorry at first. Okay, I have to stop because I got my 10 o'clock. Yeah. You guys are so awesome. So um, Biohacker Babes podcast and follow you guys on Instagram and Mike Hoban as well. And my dad, follow yeah. him on Instagram and Marcia. Mwah. I love you guys. Thank you so Thank much. You so much Thank for your you time. So awesome. We'll talk so super, super soon. Yes, okay. we will. Don't Take be care. Stranger. Bye. 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 <laughs>